if the game is to hold on to your tokens from $2 trillion to $10 trillion to $200 trillion when it's a full mature asset class, the game is to keep hold of your tokens. Don't give anybody an attack vector to take your tokens off you. Yep. Which is why if you can self-custody, better. Macro guru and Real Vision CEO Raul Pal believes that Solana SOL is poised to post new all-time highs in this market cycle. In an interview, Paul doubles down on his belief that Solana is the Ethereum ETH of the last cycle. According to Paul, Solana could skyrocket between 235% and 570% from current levels, depending on what kind of cycle we have in the coming months. In a left-shifted crypto cycle, prices peak earlier than typical four-year cycles, resulting in a shorter bull market and a longer bear phase. Looking at the broader digital asset market, Paul says cryptocurrencies are in the midst of a strong uptrend he calls the crypto summer. In today's video, we will tell you about Rule Paul's view on Solana as he thinks this is our last chance to 100x your money with Solana. But before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update. Rising gasoline prices kept inflation high in February, underscoring that the return to more modest consumer price increases after a pandemic-induced surge could remain bumpy. Rising fuel costs and rents have offset stagnant food prices. Overall prices rose 3.2% year-on-year, up from 3.1% in January, according to Labor Ministries Consumer Price Index. Every month, costs increase by 0.4%, following a 0.3% increase in the previous month. Underlying prices, which exclude volatile food and energy products, and are more closely monitored by the Federal Reserve, rose 0.4% after a similar rise in January. This still reduced the annual increase from 3.9% to 3.8%, the lowest since May 2021. Since reaching a 40-year high of 9.1% in June 2022, the inflation has slowed considerably. However, after a rapid recovery in the fall, price increases became more volatile. Many goods, such as cars, furniture, and appliances, have become cheaper over the past year as COVID-related supply chain issues have been resolved. But the cost of services such as rent, car insurance, and transportation continues to rise, in part because of soaring employee salaries. This is the largest macroeconomic trade of all time. This is the best performing asset class in history over the shortest period. Then you have the gift. Everyone can contribute 10% no matter where you live. You can contribute 10% of your salary. So it's an egalitarian, democratic, global, homogeneous asset class, and it's the hottest asset class of all time. So given that, it's pretty simple. Just buy it and keep it. But first, you have to face your own psychology. No need to use leverage, because if the game is to hold your tokens between $2 trillion and $10 trillion, or even $200 trillion, when it's a fully mature asset class, the game is to hold your tokens. Don't give anyone an attack vector to take your tokens off you. Therefore, if you have better personal custody, definitely don't borrow because someone will take your tokens. Don't do stupid things when the greatest opportunity of all time is presented to you. If the asset class is going to grow another 100 times from here on out, there's honestly no need to use leverage. You don't need to spend all your time looking for the next 100x token to invest all your money, hopes and dreams into it. Just invest 90% in the major asset classes and you'll be fine. This is the largest macroeconomic trade of all time. We're still in the middle of it all. What a great approach. You should get involved in technology. You should invest, even if it's just to learn, because the biggest change for humanity and society is underway and cryptocurrencies are just a part of it. It's like the transaction storing value layer of the internet. This is only part of the whole story. The most important things are artificial intelligence, robotics, and genetics. The formula for GDP is population growth plus productivity growth plus debt growth. We stopped and exploded all debt growth in 2008. Today, all debt growth only serves old debts. The global economy, particularly that of developed countries, has therefore actually slowed down the trend rate of GDP growth because we have a slowing, growing older population that in many countries is now in decline. Italy, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan are all starting to decline. Then we have lower population growth, which supports this large debt, so there is not enough money to pay the debt, which is why central banks are printing things. But over time, this equation will have to change, otherwise we will not explode. At the end of the day, we're hoping we're going to explode, which is what everyone fears. The value of collateral has to go down a lot, like it happened in 2008. But we've learned this new trick, devalue the currency and optically the guarantee increases. 
You can't go bankrupt in this environment, so how do we get out of this quagmire? Slow growth, aging population, the answer is above all population growth. But no one wants to open up immigration because wages have not increased in real terms. So the more immigrants there are, the less money there will be to share the economic pie. AI is infinite human knowledge, and it will become cheaper and cheaper until it turns into water. Then you scale knowledge at zero cost, which is the human brain, and beyond because that's where we're going. And then there are robots, which adapt to physical humans. So now we have infinite humans at exponentially decreasing cost. The next productivity is essentially production per kilojoule of energy. If you look at electricity prices in the UK over the last 50 years, they are quite stable. They are cyclical, but fairly stable. So, with electric vehicle technologies, geothermal, wind power, and all the things working on, we know they're not scalable enough yet, storage issues, other things, but we know that their price will drop exponentially and that will increase production. And then we have nuclear energy and what we can do with nuclear technology. So we're going to have, and maybe have again, the cost of electricity over the next 10.15 years. If technology is halved, pr productivity doubles. If it drops by half, productivity triples. Therefore, this will triple productivity while introducing an infinite population. This is an economic singularity in which all understanding of economies and economics perhaps completely breaks down. The fact is that we are rapidly approaching this point. Also, we need to understand that this AGI comes along and OpenAI as AGI, they use it to build their business and their models and everything. That's why 500 people can outperform everyone on earth. Now, when everyone understands this, the speed of disruption will be comparable to that of the coin cycle or the ICO cycle. People don't think about these things. They continue to say this will replace jobs. They lack an overview. This is beyond our understanding of everything we do. And it's extremely exciting and terrifying. So the suggestion is that you have six years to make as much money as possible because you have no idea what the world will be like. And fortunately, we have been given an opportunity, which means we can invest more in technology so that we can invest in cryptocurrencies. You have to invest in value stocks. And if we look at technology, values are rising. As people age, their savings go into markets and the currency devalues. So we have this bifurcation of what we spend our salaries and our daily assets on. Assets are therefore deferred future consumption. You buy an asset today so you can sell it later and buy something with it. So if you look at the number of homes you could buy 30 years ago compared to today, it's about a third. And that's why people don't understand inflation. Everyone is confused about these questions. It's like there are different types of inflation for different types of things. Asset affordability is a major issue and even bigger problem. If CPI inflation is low, it's a disaster. But CPI inflation is a disaster when it rises, as we've seen when it rises too quickly because wages don't adjust. That's all for today. Let us know your views in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video before leaving. Thanks for watching.